Well, someone said uh, women change, men don't. Yeah, someone in that book said that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I believe that. I, I do believe that, that there's an arc in the life of the woman. I mean, the, the first part of the, uh, your life is taken over by biological imperatives, uh, cultural, social, communal expectations and needs, and uh, you are the principal caregivers, uh, as uh, somebody in the book says, first responders to everything. Yes. And then you reach a point in life where uh, the, the natural imperatives are no longer very strong and, and you've done most of the responding mm -hmm. and caregiving. And you can sit back and say, well, what do I need? Mm -hmm. Well, men are on and this trajectory that never quite changes. You start out, you reach puberty, and, and the sense of what you're here for and what you're good at never really changes in spite of the evidence that you have mm -hmm. perhaps become. and a lot of pressure to be that and guy a lot of pressure from to society. be that from society from culture you mm -hmm. know from tradition mm -hmm. and so that a man in his 50s who suddenly starts to be afraid when he never really had to be afraid before yes the big rock the, you suddenly are uh, what 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 what's my problem and do i have any value anymore mm -hmm. and that's when you turn to the smart woman in your life or close by and you you but you don't go straight to her and say, I don't feel right. You, you make stuff up. You try to l lure her into helping mm -hmm. you through this without, in most cases, saying. And oftentimes she knows you're luring. She knows you're luring and she's trying to, f and a lot of the tension comes in the fact she's trying to figure, how am I going to tell him I know what he really needs without humiliating him? This is mm -hmm. where it gets all very tricky. Mm -hmm. and when we're tiptoeing. <laughs> yes. I shouldn't be telling you this. You no, should be telling me this. but you wrote this. this from a female perspective. I did. And, and, and this is the woman in me that's... Uh, that's yes. Well, you up. nailed it, I have to say, because well, I've, I've been where Effie Gillis has been. Hmm. Uh, your heroine, is that what we call her? Protagonist. Protagonist. Tell me about her, because this is the third in a loose trilogy, yes. the, the Bishop's Man before this, and the long stretch first. Yes. yes. And as we go along, tell me about Effie Gillis. Effie Gillis grew up in a totally dysfunctional house. Her father was a, a badly damaged war veteran. Her mother was a war bride who died when Effie was very small. So she and her brother Duncan, who was the protagonist in The Bishop's Man, they, they grow up in this, this house uh, with a very damaged father who's uh, dealing with a lot of ghosts and, and, and demons from the war. And one of those demons causes him to act, as we would say, inappropriately around Effie when he's drinking. Mm -hmm. And she's never quite sure where he's coming from, what this is all about. A neighbor always suspects that he's up to what we would normally imagine, and, and there's awful conflict when, when they get into that. So Effie grows up in this weird environment, very little influence from another woman, uh, really weird father. So her, her attitude towards men as she becomes a young woman are, are, are kind of skewed. Sure. So she's, she's looking from men for some reassurance that there is a, a, a safe relationship to be had. But she keeps getting ripped off and deceived by these guys. She gets married a couple of times, it fails, she has relationships etc. That, that don't really work out. But somehow she's got integrity and character. And, and she's got a degree, she PhD. Gets, she gets a PhD eventually and she gets tenured position at a university. Mm -hmm. She's a specialist in, in Celtic history and languages and uh, she's okay. I mean she's in a field that she commands yes. and, and she finally claws her way up to mm -hmm. the middle ages, to the early 50s and she gets a, one final betrayal and she says, that's enough, I don't need this anymore. I am an autonomous individual person and I got the equipment to take me through the rest of my life and then there is the chance encounter with the dream, I presume, mm -hmm. in every woman's heart, <laughs> the perfect guy. Yes, the Cinderella does, ending guy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And he comes he, with the glass slipper in the mm -hmm. subway station and, and it's magical. And you ask yourself, well, should I trust again? Do I need to trust yes. again? Uh, should I take the chance again, yes. especially now that my primal magnetism has waned just a, a bit? A little bit, yeah. Why is he after me? Why is he interested in me? Why, why is he this interested this, in this, me? Because mm -hmm. he has primal needs. What she doesn't understand is behind this facade of, of poise and sophistication, this guy is also in his 50s. And this guy is starting to ask himself serious questions too. Mm -hmm. 
But he doesn't, he, they're not overt. This is a passionate early stage relationship until one night uh, or early on the morning of a New Year's Day in 1999, uh, he has an encounter. And that encounter reveals his fundamental vulnerability, physical vulnerability. Mm -hmm. He gets beaten up on the street mm -hmm. by a bunch of young, several young guys. Mm -hmm. And it just undermines everything that he th knows and about himself. And this is J.C. Campbell this you're talking about. And Campbell. he is a, a journalist. He's a journalist. And travels the world much like yourself. Well, I've known a few of them in my time. <laughs> okay. We'll come back and talk more with Linda McIntyre, Why Men Lie.